Hey guys, it's Cat the Cuber. So this is a regular Rubik's Cube. It has six sides and three layers, the way that Erno Rubik originally made it. This, however, is a Megaminx. It has 12 sides, and the pieces look pretty analogous to the regular Rubik's Cube. So it's like a Rubik's Cube, but in the shape of a dodecahedron. Now, much of my practice involves the regular 3x3 Rubik's Cube, so I'm gonna change my routine, and I'm gonna practice the Megaminx for one week. We're gonna track my progress, and we're gonna see how much I can improve in the span of seven days. So, let's get started. <laughs> But let's try a new Mega Minx out. You can see the uh, shiny coating that it has. You know what? Let's let's try this cube out. So I know how to solve a Mega Minx, but I'm not the fastest. Let's see what my first solve of this one week journey is. Okay, <laughs> we got a 1 minute 52 second solve. So yeah, throughout these 7 days, I'm gonna be practicing Mega Links. And my average of 5 came out to be 1 minute and 52 seconds. Now what I will say about this journey is that I can't spend the entire day practicing Mega Minks because I am a college student. I'm not gonna be, you know, practicing Mega Minks extensively. So one thing that I will hopefully be doing is not focusing too much on timing my solves, but also taking the time to do some uh, analysis solves, slow solves, experimenting and finding ways to become faster, and yeah. So what I had spent some of today doing is uh, I searched up about Megaminx's last layer, and this one from Cubesville came up. I practiced some of these algorithms here like the corner orientation one specifically. So yeah, maybe this could improve my times. I've also kind of been practicing like a uh, U2 with lefty index. And I'm not necessarily spending all my time doing just regular like time solves, but I'm spending some time doing kind of experimenting with different solutions. I don't know, maybe if you have more of an analytical mindset, you can learn things a bit better, maybe. So... Okay, so this has been a fairly productive day, at least compared, maybe compared to the other days of this challenge. But uh, in this one, I kind of focused a bit on time solves, which can have some bad effects. But, you know, I was able to get like a 1 minute 12 solve, so maybe... I could get a sub one solve sometime during this challenge. Who knows? So, yeah. Mean looks like for day four. Stop. 
starting average of five for day six. Hey guys, so it is now day seven of this week of Mega Minx. I do want to mention something pretty interesting. And that is that I have been able to contact Leandro Martin Lopez, who is the world record holder for Mega Minx right now. So I've been able to DM him and he gave me some advice. So let me tell you what he said. Uh, try to be more efficient with F2L and S2L. Try to solve every pair in seven moves. I think it would be seven moves or less. Did also say that uh, 10 moves is, is fine as well, but uh, I guess he can do it in seven. Uh, I guess I'm gonna spend some of today practicing seven moves or less for pairing up or solving pairs. So. Yeah. So I don't know if I can do seven turns per pair if it includes pairing plus inserting. He did say ten was fine, so. I'm impatient, so I'm just gonna, just gonna do it. Okay, I guess that concludes it. It's 719 right now. That's where we're at. Oh. And this is my ending average of five. So 115 is my ending. My first average of five was one, 152. So it doesn't look like I was able to get a sub one throughout this week, but you know, maybe someday. Can't you believe it? Later that day, huh? What? Let's go. I probably will continue practicing this. So, I I think, you know, this challenge maybe sparked a new interest. So, this is Meg Mason one week, you guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.